We're gonna talk about the fastest study habits that I've had to use to turn you into something of a study speedrunner. My name is Matt. I graduated as a pre-med student with an extreme interest in how the brain learns to do new skills fast that I've since used to help out as many students as I can at my job teaching. So let's break down how to study fast in three sections. You are likely doing way too much. Imagine when you play a game like The Legend of Zelda, there are very specific things that you can do that get you all the money, all the best weapons in the game that just aren't a stick. You only have a limited number of hours in the day to study and learn. So we want to just spend our time beelining for Hyrule Castle, running through it like a madman, stocking up on the best weapons in the game, and nowhere else. This is what has been described as the 80-20 rule, where 20% of the things that you can do get you practically all of the results. I used to be way below average as a speech impediment ridden speaker, and pretty mediocre as a student, and I work with a lot of people who feel that way. We typically as humans enjoy spending time on things we are very good at and it's very uncomfortable for us to spend time on things that we suck at because the things that we aren't very good at are the most cognitively taxing and resource demanding things for our brain to work on. But for any subject you're studying, you want to identify the things where you are the weakest. You want to quickly run through the stuff that you're pretty good at in a matter of minutes and then put all of your focus on the weakest areas is the hardest stuff. This second tactic is something I heard from businessmen that I used a lot in college and a lot more in the hard-hitting world of being an entrepreneur. You want to time yourself. When I would get out of my last class for the day and run across the street to the Denver Center of Performing Arts to study acting, I was able to go into the Education Center, go past the security guard, and there were rooms that I could rent off for free. And in these rooms, I had virtually zero distractions. No one could get to me. And what happens is if you time yourself, you will see how much time you're actually spending on studying. When I started, I would laugh because it was always way less than I thought. And what was really interesting is something called Parkinson's Law came into play. Parkinson's Law states that the amount of time you give yourself to do something, whatever you're studying or working on will expand to fit that space. So if I gave myself five hours to memorize acting lines or study genetics, it would take five hours for me to get through a certain amount of material. But if I gave myself two hours, I would get through everything in two hours. You never want to underestimate how fast and efficient you can actually work. Timing yourself became a great way to combat Parkinson's law that plagues so many people. And the other thing that came about is flow state. Flow state is where you get into a very deep focus and you can work five to eight times faster than you normally would. It can take you anywhere from 10 to 25 minutes to get into a flow state. And it is so important to have zero distractions because if somebody knocks on your door, calls you on your cell phone, even if your cell phone just dings that you have a text message, this will kill your flow state and sometimes it can take people 40 minutes to get back into a flow state if you can block off six seven hours in a row that is fantastic however if you're like me and you can't this is where we get into the third point the point where we become true speedrunners and take advantage of something called the forgetting curve you see, after you study, within about one hour, studies show that you might forget up to 50% of what you learned if you don't review it. After 24 hours, retention drops significantly, and you can lose up to 70% of the information that you learned. After one week, you may remember about 10-20% to of whatever it was that you learned. So as you're timing yourself, this is where you want to work in cycles where you learn to spend anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes on a single subject, and then you immediately switch into the next subject, focusing on the weakest areas. Then after another 30 to 60 minutes, if you're feeling rambunctious, you can switch to a third subject. In doing this, we are allowing the forgetting curve to happen. We are allowing our brains to forget a lot of the information that we just studied. That just as the forgetting curve is about to kick in, we come back to the subject and stimulate our brain on that thing again and redo all of the things that we just went over. We can study in 30 minute bouts and just bounce back and forth between whatever two subjects we're studying. And this is what will allow us to tell our brains that the 
stuff we're studying is important enough to move it from our short-term storage to long-term memory. And this phenomenon has been described as the spacing effect, that we continually space out our practices throughout the day and throughout the week, forcing our brains to remember all the hard stuff that it tends to want to forget. Now here's a bonus twist to everything. There exists something called the Feynman Technique, a method where you learn something by trying to explain it in the simplest terms possible. This is something that has really pushed me as a teacher, because when you become a teacher and you suddenly have 20 adult students standing in front of you, staring at you, seeing what you have to say, it helps to really know your stuff. I suddenly had to take these very big topics and explain it in the simplest way possible so that even a five or six year old could understand me. But if we want to become a true learning speedrunner, we are going to do something that is going to make you feel very uncomfortable and most likely everyone else around you. You are simply going to talk to yourself, but you're not going to mutter to yourself in your head. You are going to talk out loud about all the things you're learning in as clear and concise of speech as possible. My family members think that I talk to myself a lot. They're right. But the problem was whenever I would talk to myself about all the things I was learning, if you put a microphone to my mouth, it would be very hard to understand and follow what I was saying. Eventually, when I had a voice and speech teacher ask me to simply state all the things I had learned out loud as clearly as possible, it was very hard for me to do. But we're not gonna just do this. You can do something that is a lot more uncomfortable to accelerate your learning. I could simply call this the three R's, being recorded record, review, and revise. Instead, you are going to do something I call crap. The C in crap stands for cringe, where you are going to cringingly stand up in front of a camera and teach the subject as if you're a teacher talking to students. If you're way more popular than I was and you have a group of friends to do this with, even better. Then the R stands for review, where you are going to identify all the areas that you're really bad at teaching because you don't quite understand them, and then you're going to move to the A, where you are going to adjust. You're going to go back to your notes, you're going to study those those weak links specifically, and then we get to the P, which is perfect, where you take this teaching test all over again. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved one detail for last. At points where I found myself cramming the night before, studying for my anatomy lab final, making sure to bounce back and forth between subjects to combat the forgetting curve, knowing the 80-20 rule. I would then spend all of my time just doing practice questions, so that way you really just get used to what the test is going to be like. If you don't have a lot of time, just spend most of your time getting really good at answering questions about the subject. But if you do have some time and you want to know how to increase your intelligence, then 